I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and very interesting broadcast tonight. We've entitled this broadcast uh, this evening, Russia's Real Purpose in Syria. And this has actually come, it's, a, it's an opinion-based news broadcast, but it's, it, it came in uh, after I've been examining a number of different articles, some of these going back to uh, all the way back to May of this year. Uh, of course, you can trace these things back 2013 and even earlier than that. But um, uh, the article that caught my attention first was that uh, I, I'd gotten a report that uh, Saudi Arabia was trying to get uh, nuclear weapons from Pakistan. And when I begin to look at some of the reports, many of these were back from May, June and May, when some of the uh, uh, news broadcasts were reporting about this. Uh, quite a few people actually brought this up. India was concerned about Saudi Arabia getting nuclear weapons. India, of course, is against Pakistan. There's a big rival area there. Um, and the reason why Saudi Arabia wanted to acquire nuclear weapons was because of the Iran nuclear deal that had been done with the uh, P5 plus one nations, uh, the United States spearheading that, which clearly identified that, that uh, Iran was on a threshold of a nuclear power. And you have to remember, you're dealing with Shiites and Sunni Muslims uh, in this. They both claim the same uh, belief basically, but uh, they, you have the Shiites and the Sunnis. The Sunnis are, are very much backed by the West. Saudi Arabia is a Sunni nation. Iran is a Shiite nation. Uh, you find also that Syria is pr predominantly a Sunni nation, but it's controlled by the Shiite government, which is the minority uh, in the country there. And Russia backs Iran, the United States backs Saudi Arabia, and now we're seeing a huge, huge problem brewing in the Middle East. And it's not just Russia coming in and taking out ISIS. Now, I, like I said, I've stated before, I've been supportive of Russia's role coming in and taking out ISIS. Uh, but what we may not, what we may be missing in this case here is that there is a greater reason why Russia is in Syria and it's not just Syria. Let me take you to a, to a news that I was catching when I was researching uh, Saudi Arabia's desire to receive nuclear weapons. Uh, and before I go to that, let me just state this too. The Saudi, the Saudi government had financed Pakistan's ability to acquire nuclear weapons to begin with. And there was always an agreement between Pakistan and Saudi Arabia if the time ever came that the Saudis needed nuclear weapons, Pakistan would make sure that they got them. Uh, but the United States has been trying to block that move ever since, trying to keep it down to where the only nuclear power in the region is Israel and, of course, the United States. Uh, in the United States being very predominantly in this region of the world. Uh, now, Iran is definitely on course on having nuclear weapons, and Russia, who is a super nuclear power, has finally came in at the request of Iran and Assad's government there to come in and put down the Sunni rebellion in this uh, uh, minority Shiite government, uh, Basra Assad. And you have to keep in mind, the Sunnis have always been loyal to the Catholics, the Vatican, whereas the Shiites are not loyal to the Vatican. So big major mess going on here. Let me go to TASS, Russian news uh, article here for you before I go into the real reason why Russia is there. It says Russia, the title of the article is Russia, UAE, that's the United Arab Emirates, it's a little country down there near Saudi Arabia, discuss coordinated efforts against ISIS, or IS in this case here. The officials from both countries gave special attention to the current situation in Syria and Yemen. Okay, now we're going to now it's going to get interesting. This was on October the 12th. TASS News reported this. 
It says, senior officials from Russia and the United Arab Emirates have discussed the events in Syria and Yemen, as well as the coordinated struggle against the Islamic State terrorist group, IS uh, terrorist group. Russian Foreign Ministry said on Monday, the UAE Deputy Director of the International Security Opera, uh, excuse me, Cooperation Department at the Foreign Ministry, Mohammed Ali Al Shamsi, and Russian Presidential Envoy for the Middle East African, uh, Makali uh, Bagdovnov. Uh, gave special attention to the current situation in Syria and Yemen, stressing the nece uh, necessity of the crisis resolution in the two countries, as well as the problems of a coordinated counter-reaction to the terrorist threat from I ISIS and other extremist groups. Okay, so the, U the United Arab Emirates there is down there by Saudi Arabia. They're wanting now to coordinate with Russia to bring an end to the attacks that are happening in Yemen. Uh, you have to remember, Russia is a strong ally of Iran. Iran is the backer of the, uh, the Houthi rebels there in Yemen that have been trying to topple the government and overtake the country. Saudi Arabia has actually come in and has been bombing and attacking uh, the Houthis there to try to put down the rebellion. Again, why this is all United States area here where the U.S. Is, is, has allies with Yemen as well as allies in, uh, with Saudi Arabia. It's their stronghold. And of course, here's the big part of it all. The reason why Russia is really in Syria is to dominate the Middle East. When they put down the rebellion in Yemen, he, by uniting with the Arab Emirates, uh, the United Arab Emirates, by, by uniting with them, they will also bring Saudi Arabia either into submission and make a deal with them, or they'll end up going to war with Saudi Arabia and crushing Saudi Arabia as well. Now, if that were to happen, it will actually cause the United States to have to make a decision. Are they going to come to the aid of Saudi Arabia, or are they going to allow Saudi Arabia to be totally overrun by Russia? And of course, Russia is not going to have to do the actual foot soldiers to begin with. Iran would, would supply the foot soldiers to bring down Saudi Arabia. But the purpose behind this is to crush Saudi Arabia, that where the United States has been using Saudi Arabia to drive down oil prices to cause Russia havoc in their economic, economic system by driving the oil prices down. So Russia has come in, stepped up as the major world power player there in the Middle East, not only for the oil that is there in, in Syria and in the Golan, but they are also there to bring Saudi Arabia to its knees to surrender and to change their, 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 uh, their prices on the oil in order to get OPEC to go back up on the prices so that Russia also can sell their own oil at quote unquote a fair market price. This is an economic strategic move on Russia's part it's kind of interesting. I don't know if anybody has actually caught this in any of the news arenas there, but it's quite obvious to me that this is exactly what Russia's doing. It's what I've seen as I begin to look at this situation here. Why would Russia be working with the United Arab Emirates there, uh, a country they're separate from Saudi Arabia there, but in order to deal with Yemen? We know that Russia backs Yemen uh, as far as uh, with the Iranians there dealing with Yemen. So... It's really interesting to see what's happening, what's going to transpire in the very near future. And again, it's clearly a Shiite-Sunni battle. Uh, but it seems that the Vatican has very much leaned over towards the Russian side of doing things. Well, only time will tell. As I said, too, of course, we know Israel is still embroiled in a tremendous intifada that is taking place uh, even as we speak there in Israel. Uh, there have still been many attempts uh, in, in here in the last day or so Several of these attempts of killing people have been thwarted by the by whether it be the Israelis, the military, or even the uh, the average citizens on the street have been thwarting these attacks. They have become more vigilant uh, in doing so. Uh, but there is one report though that did catch my eyes in Israel there that was really kind of uh, disturbing to me that the Israeli government did to one particular woman that uh, that is in her 50s. She's lived in Israel for 35 years. 
uh, is the, the title of the article, which is on Israel National News, Jewish Woman Loses Gun for Praying on the Temple Mount. God bless her for taking the stand to pray on the Temple Mount. But anyway, she lives in um, uh, around Jerusalem's old city, uh, says in the middle of an Arab terror wave centered around Jerusalem's old, I'm sorry, she lives in Judea and Samaria, uh, Jerusalem's old city, a 55-year-old female Jewish resident of the uh, Restiva area has had her license to carry a handgun removed by Eternal Security, Security Ministry. The reason given for removing her means of self-defense, according to the ministry, police claim she prayed on the Temple Mount, the holiest site in Judaism. Uh, the woman, uh, Fiega uh, Tavnis has lived in the old city for the past 35 years. For all those 35 years, she has held a license to carry a firearm and owned a personal handgun. In all those years, she has never been investigated or run afoul of the law. Uh, the whole point that, that even her attorney was bringing out, she's never had any problems whatsoever. So she decides to pray on the Temple Mount, gets caught doing so, and now they confiscate her gun in the midst of the most serious problem that could possibly be. You know, if anything else that they could have done, they could have maybe limited the time that she would be going up on the Temple Mount uh, temporarily until the escalation of these uh, this violence ceases. But I commend her for making that bold stand there. And of course, many people do pray on the Temple Mount. Many Christians pray on the Temple Mount. They may not do it audibly, and the Jews do it as well. They're praying regardless when they go up there because God doesn't need an audible voice to hear you. He knows your thoughts when you're praying anyway. So God bless everyone that prays on the Temple Mount and uh, because it's certainly a place that you should be able to pray because God would that we would have hands lifted up everywhere calling upon Him. No place should be so sacred uh, that it could be taken, that right could be taken away. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Keep your eyes on Russia. Very, I, I have to say in closing here, Vladimir Putin, very smart, very smart man in the move that he has made there. Uh, of course, my concern is, is that he will back the Iranians and, the, and Hezbollah when they go to attack Israel on the northern border. I believe that is... Uh, that could be months away. It could be more than a month away. It could, be a, it could be a year away even, but it could also be days away. It really depends how which way the Intifada goes and how much uh, Hamas begins to lob rockets into Israel once again. Uh, and by the way, there is already a call uh, from within some of the people in the government there, the Hamas government, et cetera, in the, in the uh, PLO, that are calling on a jihad, a holy war. They are calling for Hezbollah. They're calling for Iran and everyone to join with them to put down and stomp down the Jewish people. God will intervene, but I don't think it's going to come without a cost. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.